For me, the best part of summer is swimming in the bay. There is no better view than looking back at the coast floating from a distance. But as an environmental engineer, I cannot stop thinking about all the effort and resources we use to treat wastewater that we then dump into Narragansett Bay. I grew up in a coastal city in South America that sometimes I could not enjoy fully because of wastewater contamination. And because of this, I got interested to study on how to treat wastewater. I'm obviously biased, but I think wastewater treatment is one of the greatest invention of our modern world. Thanks to it, we can prevent human diseases and damages to the environment. But early in my career, I was taught that wastewater is an undesirable residue and the only thing that we can do is to treat it to reduce its negative impact. But things are changing. Climate change and depletion of resources are forcing us to think in a different way. There is not such a thing as waste, only stuff in the wrong place and in the wrong time. So my question today is how we can take the waste out of wastewater. So let's start with a little bit of a dirty talk. After you flush your toilet, take a shower, or wash your dishes, the water starts a fascinating transformation. If you live in an urban area, most likely the wastewater first is transported through miles and miles of underground tunnels to a facility that first removes the solids and then use an engineered natural process in which microorganisms eat tiny little particles and dissolve pollutants and grow and multiply so big that they can form flocks that they can be easily separated from the water, producing a cleaner water. But for this to happen, gigantic amount of air and energy are used to promote this process. And here's where things get interesting. Water and wastewater operation use over 2% or 70 million kilowatt hours of electricity only in the US. This is the same amount of electricity used by 7 million houses. Also, these facilities account for 5% of the greenhouse gases emission. Wastewater treatment can also be an economical burden to many communities. More strict regulation might require adding new processes, increasing the operational costs, and eventually, this extra cost needs to be paid by somebody, most likely us, the consumer. We can certainly do better, but where is the opportunity here? What would you think if I tell you that wastewater contains as high as five times the energy we need to treat it? Wastewater has chemical energy stored in the organic matter and is about one third of the total embedded energy. Remember that tiny little flux of microorganisms that eat the pollutant? We can use them to produce biogas. This process is already used in some places, but more effort should be placed to make it a norm everywhere. Thermal energy is the largest portion of energy in wastewater, or about two-thirds. After we use the water, Wastewater is always warmer than the water that is entering our houses. The wastewater temperature is much warmer than the outdoor air in winter and much cooler during summer. So we could use this temperature difference to heat water or even in heating and cooling systems. Beside energy, wastewater can be a source of other materials as well. For example, drinking water. Droughts and changes in rain pattern have driven the search for alternative sources of drinking water. There is a great interest and effort placed on using seawater for drinking water purposes. But did you know that there's more water in wastewater than in seawater? Seawater has 97% of water and 3% of salts and other compounds. On the other hand, wastewater is 99.9% .9 water. This might seem a small difference to you, but when we're talking about treating millions and millions of gallons of water every year, the energy savings could be important. Nitrogen and phosphorus harvesting is another example of a benefit that might derive from wastewater. 
Our food supply relies on the use of synthetic nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizer. Their production accounts for over 1% of all the energy we use in the world. On the other hand, every year we use enormous amount of energy trying to remove nitrogen and phosphorus from wastewater to prevent algae bloom and low oxygen zones in coastal and freshwater systems. It seems great, but why are we not doing all of this? The problem is that in most cases, the technology available might not be economically attractive. Also, let's face it, wastewater is not hot on the public eye. For most, wastewater is out of sight and out of mind. We need to change our views on wastewater and increase our efforts to take advantage of all the hidden potential of wastewater. Doing this, we can transform this undesirable residue into a promised resource. So do me a favor. Next time you flush your toilet, think about the unwasted future of wastewater.